found in Siberia and other far northern regions. Who'd like to start off? Yes, Mike? Well, for one thing, they've got thick hair all over their body, even on their noses. Yes, they're very well insulated. And the thickness of their fur varies depending on the season. Good. Yes? Um, newborn reindeer are very adult-like. Uh, like, they can stand as soon as they're born. And by their second day, they can already run as fast as a human. Critical. Food is very scarce in the far north, so reindeer herds have to cover lots of ground every day. And in the fall, they might easily trek a thousand kilometers or more to get to their winter feeding site. So if you're a newborn, you've got to get up to speed fast. Okay. Uh, other adaptations? Also, reindeer don't have to keep their legs as warm as their main body, so they don't have to use up as much energy keeping them warm. Yes, so that means they can allocate less energy to heating their extremities and more energy to maintaining a stable temperature in their body core, where their vital organs are located. And, you know, I don't think it's mentioned in your textbook, but even different parts of a reindeer's leg are adapted for optimal cold weather performance. The fat in the lower part of their legs, um, the part that gets coldest, that fat has a different chemical structure from the fat in the upper parts of the leg. So it doesn't get hard, even at temperatures down around freezing. It stays kind of gel-like, kind of oily. Okay, good. What about food? What do you remember about that? Uh, well, they're pretty flexible. Okay. Can you explain that a little more? Well, they can eat a lot of different kinds of plants, so that improves their chances of coming across something they can eat. I think they said that they found that the reindeer in one herd had eaten something like 37 different kinds of plants. Okay, yes. You've really done your reading. And reindeer also eat a number of different plant species that most animals are not very interested in. Which means... They don't have a lot of competition when it comes to that food? That's right. In particular, your reading mentions lichens. Lichens are plants you'll find growing on rocks in the far north, sometimes referred to as reindeer moss. They look pretty basic, you know, just a little moss on a rock. But lichens are actually quite complex. They're not just a single organism. They're, they're actually a kind of combination of some sort of a fungus and some sort of algae that live together in a symbiotic relationship. Anyway, okay, reindeer. Um, oh, oh yes, and one more thing about lichens. They crank out a lot of chemicals, which is probably at least part of the reason why they're not considered all that tasty by most animals. Anyway, uh, does anyone remember what your reading said about them? Yeah. Somehow when reindeer eat lichens, they're able to draw a lot more nutrients from them than other animals. Like if a cow or a sheep eats lichens, they're only going to get like half as much nutrition out of them as a reindeer would. That's right. And in winter, lichens are crucial for reindeer because they supply energy. But they don't have all the proteins and minerals the reindeer need. Um, so when reindeer get to the end of the long winter, they're often very thin, with low levels of minerals. In spring, they have to eat different plants and replenish what they've lost over the winter. So what reindeer have done is they've developed the ability to digest different plants in different seasons by adjusting the microbes in their digestive systems. As you know, microbes are microorganisms, like bacteria, that help to digest or break down food. And, well... What's interesting about reindeer is that they change the proportion of different microbes in their digestive system. Uh, so you, so the reindeer might have more of one kind of microbe in winter to help digest the plants it eats then, and in the summer, um, it would have more of another kind of microbe to help it digest summer plants. That way, the reindeer gets more nutrition out of different foods at different times of the year. What do you think about that? Wow. That was wow. pretty good, huh? Yeah. Not bad, not bad at all. So when I break this down, okay, and I wanted to give you this because if you look at my main ideas, okay, if I mm -hmm. want to quickly sum up based on the left-hand column of all my notes, <clears throat> this is basically about reindeer the characteristics, and it's about the food they eat. 
and how its body adjusts to the food it eats and how it scours for food. So this is all about reindeer, 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 okay? And it's about the adaptation too. You got the first mm-hmm. adaptation, the newborn, and then you got the second one in terms of keeping it le- keeping its legs warm, then it talks about its diet, specifically lichens, okay? And how it needs to eat in both the winter and the summer and how its body works. So my gist purpose is gonna be around that. I think it's gonna be easier for me to do process of elimination in question number one, because based on what I just told you over this last minute, I know exactly what I'm looking for. I know what's too specific and I know what's very general. That's kind of what I'm aiming for. So in A, it says explanations for a recent increase in the population. Fuck no. I wrote down nothing about an increase population and I don't even remember hearing that. So I'm gonna quickly eliminate A. Just as I told you, it's gonna be very easy for me to eliminate the bullshit because I know what I'm looking for based on what I have in the left-hand side of my column. B, Mm -hmm. adaptations that enable a reindeer to live in cold climates. Well, it's about the, yeah, yeah, adaptations. I mean, that's the majority of it. So I kind of like B, but let's go to C. Differences between newborn reindeer and adult reindeer. I did not write down differences. I wrote down adaptations, food, lichens, and what they eat and the nutrients that they get. There was no Mm -hmm. comparison between the newborn and the adult. The newborn was only mentioned at the beginning. In terms of it needing to be up to speed, they have to cover a lot of ground. 1,000 kilometers in fall is how much they trek. They need to learn very quickly. That's all I wrote down about the newborn. So I'm going to eliminate C. Now, D, changes in the reindeer's food supply. You see that that's in my third column when I first wrote down food. However, Mm -hmm. did I write down changes at all? No. They eat lichens. There is no change. Now, again, I understand that they have to change their diet from winter to summer to get the specific microbes and all that stuff, but this is not what the majority of it is about. I believe that B is by far the best answer. There it is. Do you see how I did that? Yes. Mm -hmm. So that's how I break it down. That's exactly how I break it down, okay? So- Based in my left-hand column, I know exactly what I'm looking for in my gist purpose. So all of this, okay, all of that in my left-hand column, this is all the main ideas. It's all about the main ideas. You see, I wrote down GP as in gist purpose, and then I wrote down reindeer right after two, okay? This is what we got to do. Now, here we go. Let's go to number two. Why is it necessary for a newborn reindeer to be able to walk and run almost immediately? I'm in my first column. This is what I wrote down. Mm -hmm. The newborn is almost adult-like because on the second day, it could run as fast as a human. Food is very scarce. That's number one. Why is it necessary? Food is scarce. So they need to cover lots of ground. In the fall, like I told you, they trek 1,000 kilometers. They need to learn quick. They need food, okay? So that needs to be in my answer. Now, you're probably, obviously you can't see, but I did not look at the answers yet, okay? I have a student yesterday by the name of Brenda. She is my powerful Kuwana. (laughs) She took a full test. She didn't look at her notes one time and she got a 25 on that bullshit test glider website. That's crazy. I mean, she, her, her ability to remember everything gets fucking unbelievable as well as the process of elimination. So, but at the same time, me, I'm just trying to give you a good idea of how I compartmentalize all my information. So let's keep it going. A, newborn reindeer face intense competition from older reindeer. That's the dumbest shit I've ever heard in my life, nor did I write that down in this area. You don't have to look any further, any further than this first column, because this is where this question is. B, reindeer herds have traveled have to travel long distances every day. Ooh, I love the 1,000 kilometers of throughout the course of fall, so B is sexy. C, running and walking help reindeer maintain a stable body temperature. Notice that I did not write down body temperature yet in my first column. Ooh. See, I'm telling you, when I compartmentalize shit, it makes it so much easier. Because guess what? Yesterday, you know, you getting two out of six, you you weren't compartmentalizing information. So 
you're pretty much considering everything because you're probably looking top to bottom in your notes. Could be, could be. But I eliminated C just because I didn't even write down temperature yet. The fuck am I going to consider temperature for as an answer? Hell no. Now, look at this. Running is the only way reindeer can protect themselves from predators. I did not write down the word predator in that first column. B is mm -hmm. easily the best answer. And there it is. Yeah. I know this. Well, what do you think about this note taken, Leslie? Look sexy. Oh, nice. it's sexy. You got me right. Okay, Mrs. El Salvador. You understand what sexy is when you see it. Okay. <laughs> That's exactly what these notes are. So <laughs> I love it. You're already picking up with me. I always say sexy. <laughs> Everything is fucking sexy up in here. Okay, God damn it. But anyways, man, I so I'm going to continue going on. Let's go into question number three. Lower part of the reindeer's legs. You already know where I'm going to be. I'm right here in the second adaptation. They need to keep their legs mm -hmm. long. Not much energy is needed for the lower half of their legs. Different parts of the leg is adapted for cold weather. The fat has a different chemical structure in the upper part. Or I think it's in the lower part. I have no idea. So it stays gel-like. So I'm kind of in that area. Based on this second column right here, this is how I'm going to select A, B, C, or D. A, it stays warmer than the upper part of the leg. Well, that is technically true. Let's look at B, though. It is able to maintain the same temperature as the main part of the reindeer's body. I did not write down anything in regards to the main deer, uh, I'm sorry, the reindeer's main part of the body. Let's keep it going. See, it contains fat that changes texture at lower temperatures. Well, I did write down it stays gel-like. D, it contains fat that is different from the fat in the upper part of the leg. To be honest with you, I think D would be the best because based on what I have right here, it has different fat that stays gel-like. That was very difficult. I'm going to tell you why. When I looked at A, mm -hmm. I was considering A. When I looked at C, I was considering C. When I looked at D, I'm like, well, based on what I wrote down, I wrote down fat, colon, different chemical structure in upper part. Not hard, stage gel-like. A, it just says it stays warmer. Did I write that? Did I write that down though? No, I did no. not write down that its lower part of the leg stays warmer. I got to stay away from A because I didn't write that down. Although I was considering it, I have to I have to stay away from that. C, it contains fat that changes texture at lower temperatures. I kind of remember her mention texture and lower temperatures and all that. But did I write that down? No. So when I came to D and it said contains fat that is different from the fat in the upper part, that is the closest thing to my little highlight right here, as you see. That is literally the closest yes. thing that I have. I got to stay with that. Mm -hmm. Sometimes, man, I'm telling you, yeah. there's nothing better than your notes. Now, again, the marvelous, marvelous, marvelous Kuana that I know, she didn't even look at her notes for the entire five goddamn, you know, three lectures and two conversations and got a 25. I don't know how she did it, Okay. But me right here, I believe the paper more than my ability, my short term memory. <laughs> OK, so that's yes. how I do it. Number four, I know it's going to start talking about food and lichens. So here we go. Here we go. What does the professor imply about lichens? This is an inference question. First and foremost, it grows on rocks. It's reindeer moss has a complex combination of fungus and algae, symbiotic relationship, lots of chemicals, and it's not tasty. This is the only type of food that reindeers, uh, uh, reindeers love to eat, and nobody else eats it because it's nasty. So they have food all year round. So here we go. Let's check it out. They need reindeer in order to survive. That is probably the stupidest shit I've ever seen. Can you imagine that? The moss. There ain't no reindeers in my yard. I have moss in my yard. Okay. So why in the hell would reindeers? Oh, yes. My reindeer saliva is going to keep you alive. Fuck no. You're going to eliminate A very quickly. B, they are more abundant than other Arctic plants. Did I write down Arctic plants? No. 
Ooh. Ooh, that, that is, yeah, I didn't write that down, though. I'm a little bit scared. Let's keep it going to see, though. They are more important to cows and sheep. No. Cows and sheep, when they eat it, they do not get the full maximum minerals in everything that the reindeer does for whatever reason. I remember writing that down right over here. Cow and sheep get half the nutrition. Okay. Now, it doesn't okay. have protein and minerals, but in the winter, it's important because of energy, which kind of brings me back to the whole bee. Ah, this kind of brings me back to B a little bit. Okay, I'm a little bit scared, but let's get B. They are the object of fierce competition. Fuck no. So you know what my answer is going to be? B. So mm -hmm. let me let me let me show you this. This is what happened. I looked at this third column. It grows on rocks. All these different things. However, in the fourth column, a student mentioned that the reindeer eat uh, reindeer eat more nutrients or something like that. Cows and sheep get half the nutrition. This highlight that I put right here in the winter, it's important because of energy. I assume that in the winter is Arctic. And so when I saw B, I stayed there. I got stuck a little bit and I'm like, they are more abundant than other Arctic plants during the winter. Now, looking in this column right here, I was unable to look at B and say, oh yeah, that's the answer. However, after eliminating C and coming down here, they are the object of fierce competition. Obviously, that's the stupidest thing I've ever heard in my life. So it comes right back up here. And because it, I wrote down winter, it's important because of energy. Well, there are no other Arctic plants available in the winter. That's why it is very important in the winter because moss is widely available all year around. That's what the professor is implying. That's why I selected B. So I think you, you're really going to have to develop the competency in terms of process of elimination. Okay. That process of elimination is going to be absolutely crucial. Okay. Okay. Because what's going to happen is if you don't have that process of elimination, you're going to end up getting a little bit lost in terms of the answers. So yesterday you get two out of six you would have been able to score a little bit higher based on, okay, now I'm going to eliminate this. 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 See what I mean? Yeah. Okay. Let's keep it going. Now I know that my next answer is uh, my next answers are going to come right over here in the bottom column. Here we go. We're talking about microbes now. All right. What does the professor say about microbes in reindeer in a reindeer's digestive system? Well, I remember the most important thing is that it changes in proportion. More microbes in a the winter, they have more specific microbes in a winter than they do in the summer because those microbes can digest blah, 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 blah. However, in the summer, they have another type of microbe in excess because they digest blah, 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 more than winter. That's what I'm going to look for in the answer. It digests different plants in different seasons. Some of the microbes protect. I did not write down protect or harmful or bacteria. B, many of the microbes are transported into the reindeers, but I did not write down the word transport. Notice that I always go after the verb. <laughs> mm -hmm. I love the verbs because the verbs are dead giveaways. C, oh, notice that I wrote down Propor and I see change proportion, right? I wrote down CHG purport and notice mm -hmm. it's C, it says the proportion. So now it's got my attention, the proportion of various microbes changes to other changes in the reindeer style. C is fucking beautifully sexy. But let's mm -hmm. look at D just to laugh at it. The microbes found in a newborn. I did not write down newborn in this specific area of my notes. C answer. Bada bing, bada boom. Yes. What do you think? Yeah. Not bad. Okay, let's do this last one. Oh, I love these types of questions, the function question. Now, here we go. Let's see what we got right here. All right. Let's see. Listen again to part of the lecture, then answer the question. All right. 
But lichens are actually quite complex. They're not just a single organism. They're, they're actually a kind of combination of some sort of a fungus and some sort of algae that uh -huh. live together in a symbiotic relationship. Symbiotic uh, Anyway, okay, reindeer. Okay. Uh, that was, oh, okay, okay, at the very end. They didn't record this because the Chinese, they have no fucking idea what they're doing. At the very end, did you hear what she said? She said, anyway, okay, reindeer. Anyway, okay, reindeer. Mm -hmm. She's getting back to the point that she was making. She went off on a tangent, which I normally do, especially in my podcast, but then she comes back to her original point. So what's going to happen is on the test, he's going to say, why does the professor say this? Anyway, okay, reindeer. It's because she's mm -hmm. going back to her original point. That's the answer we need to find. So A mm -hmm. is that she wants to emphasize the importance of her previous point. She wants to illustrate her previous po point with an example. That could be it. However, C, she wants to return to the main topic of the lecture. And D, she wants to clarify her previous statement. So obviously C would be the best. Mm -hmm. Because she said, anyway, so reindeer. But the thing is, if you're listening to the majority of the content, Leslie, do not focus on the content of function questions. It has no relativity 